everyone, and welcome to episode 69 of the Potter Discussion. I am your host, Oscar, and here on the Potter Discussion, we discuss some of Harry Potter's deepest and darkest theories, tidbits, and little Easter eggs you might have missed, and you probably did. Wow, what's that? Is that music? (laughs) Yeah, got some cool music, so I'm testing that out. But today's episode is Quizmaster Weasley Edition. The Weasley family, they are so vast, with nine members, I think. It's just crazy how big their family is, and they have about, like probably about half of all the little facts in the Harry Potter story. And all those little facts are things that you just can't quite remember, which is why I want to test my knowledge today, and I invite you to play along with me, and please email me how many you got right, and any questions you want to hear in the next Quizmaster, thepotterdiscussion at gmail.com, thepotterdiscussion at gmail.com. That is where you can answer my questions and send me yours. So that's exciting. But without further ado, this is Quizmaster Weasley Edition. Let's go. So I have compiled 15 of the hardest questions I could find. And all of them pertain to at least one of every Weasley in the family. So I didn't really say that right, but... There, I tried to get at least every Weasley uh, for one question. So, if we don't know one character very well in the Weasley family, you might not get a question right. But still, there are a ton of Weasleys, so you're going to get some other ones right. So, question number one. Let's go. Number one. Which Weasley did not appear in the films? Ooh, okay. Now, I'm going to help you out with this one. Let's just run through the characters that we absolutely know are in the uh, movies. So, we of course, we know Ron, Fred, and George, Molly, and Arthur. So, I think those... Oh, and Ginny. So, those are the, uh, like, six surefire, you know, those are definitely in the movies. And then the three that we might not... Oh, and Percy, of course. Why did I not say that? And then there is Bill, Charlie... And I think that's it. Hmm, okay. So it's either Bill or Charlie. And I know the answer to this. I actually do, somehow. So, can you guess? Can you guess? Well, the answer is Charlie. Remember Bill? He was attacked by the werewolf, uh, Fenrir, and you see his scar and everything, but Charlie was never in the films. Which is absolutely crazy to think about, but it's true. Alright, question number two. At which position does mortal peril appear on the Weasley clock? That's good. That one is definitely very good. And I don't think you're going to be able to go off of the movies here. Because it definitely says, it 100% says it in the book. It kind of flashes by the clock. But it was heavily focused on in the book as like a Weasley, like a classic Weasley thing. And if you really think about it, I mean, it's pretty obvious if you, well, once you know the answer, it's pretty obvious, but if you think about it and you got your answer, I'll reveal in three, two, one, it is position 12, the very top, if one of the Weasley spoons are pointing to mortal peril, they are probably in mortal peril at 12 o'clock. All right, now question number three, what object does Mr. Weasley ask Harry what the function of that object is. So, Mr. Weasley would go, Harry, what is the function of blank? That was that, this, this one actually is really funny. <laughs> I remember reading about this and thinking to myself, like, wow, Mr. Weasley, can't, you don't just know about it? And it, th- this was kind of getting my brain going, thinking about how muggle things aren't in the wizarding world and of course wizard things aren't in the muggle world but things like muggle money and math like where where do wizards know math i think it's just like a thing that they go through but it might be hogwarts and um uh, elvermoney and dermstrang they all rely on 
um, the education before you go to the wizard school, before you turn 11. And that's kind of your, you know, counting and actually reading and all that kind of stuff. But back to the question, what object does Mr. Weasley ask Harry about? The answer is a rubber duck. It was so funny <laughs> watching in the movies. M Mr. Weasley just goes, Harry, y you must be, you know, you must know a lot about muggles. So tell me, what is the function of a rubber duck? <laughs> it's so funny. And then when Harry actually tries to answer. <laughs> oh, man, that was a really good part. All right, moving straight into question number four. What do Fred and George bet they can say five times fast in the fourth film? Okay, just to give you a little context, this was in the training of the Yule Ball, and I think it only appears in the film, so you can't go off the books for this one. And, okay, I'm going to give you the biggest hint. McGonagall says it. Professor McGonagall says, don't act like a, and then a really long whatever. Then, Fred and George say, but you can't say this ten cents fast, and they bet on it. And it rhymes, and they all start with B. I mean, come on, I'm, I'm giving you so many clues. If you haven't guessed already, it is, I'm, I'm trying to say it, a big, babbling bunch of baboons. I think that's what it was. It was something along those lines, and... <laughs> That was so funny when they, when, when Fred and George just go, I bet you can't say that five times fast, and they go along with it, and the way Professor McGonagall says it, too, is just so perfect. Maggie Smith does such a, does such a great job with that scene, because it so perfectly encompasses how the Weasley twins act when something like that is said. So, that was just a great scene. Grant answered the question. And moving right on to question number five. In which book does Percy fully separate from the family? That's a tough one because the definition of separate might be different for different people. But I think we can be safe with just, you know, when did he have the argument with Mr. Weasley, and then fully just leave and disband, I guess. And I think I do know the answer to this one, but it's only because I just watched the fifth uh, the fifth film and I saw Percy, you know, in his full ministry, I want to make a lot of money mode. So if, if you can get it, that's great. But let's just, let's just run through the movies. If you, if you have it already, then, I mean, awesome. But let's run through the movies and see which ones we can uh, pick out. So, one, of course, definitely with them. Two, of course, yes. And three, I think he joined the ministry in the third book. So, I think he's still there. And four, did he go to the Quidditch World Cup? Oh, uh, yeah, he did. I clearly remember in the book, because she was talking with Ludo Bagman, about that kind of thing. So, Percy was definitely with them in the fourth book. But then, the fifth? I think it is the fifth book, and that is the answer. The fifth book is when Percy fully separated from the Weasley family, and I was thinking about him, you know, busting Harry and Dumbledore's army, and him dragging Harry and Cho up the up to the headmaster's office, and he was just like, you know what, I'm gonna follow the rules, I'm gonna make a lot of money, be the Mr. of Magic. So that was his, you know, like, I hate my family, and now I'm gonna move away kind of phase. So that's the answer, book number five. And right along to question number six, word for word, what does Mr. Weasley say when he finds out the boys flew the car? Man, I know, I kind of know the gist of what he was trying to say, but word for word, that's going to be tough. I know he was like, great, how did it work, you know, did it go well? So, I know Mrs., so let, let, let's, let's uh, go, um, go through the scene. So, they get back, Mrs. Weasley just goes off, and they try to hide their guilty faces in their breakfast that they're <laughs> eating while they're walking up the stairs. And then Mr. Weasley gets home, and he doesn't really see Harry until Harry says, Oh yeah, hi, I'm Harry Harry Potter, and the whole thing goes down. 
and then Mrs. Weasley's like, well, I got you now. And she says, Arthur, the boys took out your car. I don't know what that line was. And then Mr. Weasley says, aha, yes, I have it. No, he didn't say that, but I, I have it, what he said. He said, great, how did it work? And that's the answer. Great, how did it work? If you don't have those words exactly, that's completely fine. But I think, you know, that was another great scene. The Weasleys have such great lines and scenes. But I love that one particularly because it shows how much of a muggle-affiliated person uh, Mr. Weasley is. And he just loves testing out little muggle things and, of course, asking Harry how rubber ducks work, apparently. But <laughs> he just loves testing out and tinkering with the muggle life and how muggles live. And that's just a great example of how Mr. Weasley is curious about that kind of thing. And there it is. All right, question number seven. In the third book, when Harry hears Mrs. Weasley say, with that hanging over him, what was the that she was referring to? So, that line appeared in the... It was only in the book... And in the book, Harry was retrieving Ron's rat tonic under the bar. And he got it. Then he walked up the stairs and he heard Mr. and Mrs. Weasley arguing about something. So he stops to listen. And he didn't quite catch what that uh, what the that was. But he hears Mrs. Weasley say, with that hanging over him. So what was that? What was the that? <laughs> What <laughs> that, yes. So, what was it? I mean, I don't know. Well, I think everyone basically knew who was in on the secret. Everyone knew that uh, Sirius Black was like very strongly connected with Harry. So, I think this one is one of the easier ones because it was so the that is that Sirius Black is Harry's uh, godfather. And that is the answer to the question. So, if you got it right, congratulations. But we're moving on to number eight. What was Ginny looking for when she came to the breakfast table in the second film? So, this is when we immediately... So, we, we first meet Ginny. Well, we Ginny has her first line in the film. And it's, this is the second film. And she runs downstairs and she says, Have you seen my blank? And sees Harry, and then just she lay back away, and then runs <laughs> because she was deeply in love, I guess you would call it, with Harry at that moment. And she was talking about him all summer, and she just couldn't take it, so she ran away. But she was looking for something. It wasn't Harry, but what was she looking for? This one might be a little difficult because she says that line very fast, and I don't know if it was in the book. I'll check after this episode, but it might be in the book, who knows, but the answer is her jumper. She says, Mom, have you seen my jumper? She's hair and runs away. That's the answer. Question number nine. What was the core of Ron's first wand? Oh, come on, come on, that one's easy. I think I'm going to go off of the film. No, actually, I'm going to go off of both, both sides of the story. So... I think, all right, they're in the car. They're flying towards Hogwarts. They miss the wall. They hit the Whomping Willow. And Ron goes, stop, 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 banging his very fragile wooden wand against the extremely tough <laughs> car dashboard. <laughs> and, uh, maybe it was the wheel, who knows? And then it breaks. And he's like, no one. <laughs> that, that was another just fantastic line. Because Ron knew that his wand was his well-being, and Mrs. Weasley would kind of go off on him if he broke his wand. And he, they, they won that Grand Galleon Grand Prize, whatever it was, in the third book, so he could pay it back, but still. So he broke his wand, and I know we saw it then, and he said, it, he said what it was in the book. So what did he say? Well, he said... My blank is hanging out of his wand. The core is hanging out of his wand. So whatever his core was, that is what that was. And 
We have actually talked about what his the core of his wand was before, so if you can draw on that, maybe you already know. But the answer is unicorn hair. And I believe that was the core of his second wand, if I'm not mistaken. As well, unicorn hair is the answer. Question number 10. Who did Mr. Weasley work with? In the Department of Misuse of Muggle Artifacts, uh, Mr. Weasley worked with a, another entity, and it was only him and that other person. So, who was that person? Well, I know it was only one person, and I know the person's name started with a P. Oh, and a warlock. Uh, I think it was a male warlock whose name started with P. And the name, I don't know the name. Let's think about the name. I think, funnily enough, Mr. Weasley only says it once. Only says it once. In the fifth uh, book. I don't think we ever go to the Misuse of Muggle Artifacts office in the uh, film. Yeah, because they're like late for the trial and they have to rush down the uh, down the stairs. So, I think the answer is Perkins. Perkins the Warlock is who Mr. Weasley works with. Question number 11. Where did Mr. Weasley take Harry for his trial? I think... We should do courtroom. So, which courtroom? I know it was switch. So, it was courtroom number three. Yeah. It started with courtroom number three when it switched. And it went to courtroom number... I think... I think ten. That's the answer. Courtroom number ten, yeah, because Harry was then being tried in front of the entire Wisdom Gamot, so he had to be in a very large courtroom, which is courtroom number ten. Alright, question number twelve. What did George call himself after losing an ear? Oh, it was a whole joke about, like, how he didn't have his ears, so it was just a hole there. And I know Fred was like, out of the whole world of ear-related humor, you went with blank. I think it is holy. Oh, no, it was, oh, oh, it was saint-like. <laughs> George called himself saint-like after losing an ear because he uh, he was holy. He had a <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst joke ever. And I, I, I'm going to have to agree with Fred on this one. That was a very bad joke. Alright, question number 13. How many galleons did the Weasley vault have in the second book? Alright, this one's a little easier. And I think I'm not even going to try to figure this one out. Because I think it's just one. Yeah. But this is only in the book. Because Harry was trying to cover up that he had, you know, thousands of galleons in his vault when they only had one. I think it was described as one uh, one lone gallon on top of a small pile of silver sickles, which is crazy because I saw this chart um, that was comparing wizard money to, you know, regular money, and the one galley is only seven U.S. dollars. And if you live in the U.S., you'll know how, how little that is. So it's crazy how they can live off of, like, $10. $10. That's crazy. Moving on, question number 14. Which voice did Ron hear from the Deluminator? This one's pretty self-explanatory. In the seventh book, Ron left, and immediately he wanted to come back. So he waited a couple days, and then he started hearing a voice from his Deluminator telling him to come back. So what voice was that? Well, it was Hermione's voice. That is the answer. And now we are here. Lucky question number 15. For this question, you have five seconds. Just five seconds, and I won't tell you what the question is until the clock starts. So, and do all these things by name, not number. Alright, the clock starts in three, two, one. One, how many wheezes are there? Name them in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, 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 stop. No, you're, you're still thinking. Stop it. Okay, okay. <laughs> if you got all those, congratulations. Now run them. Let's, let's run them through together. So we have Ron, Fred, George, Molly, Arthur, Percy, George, not George, Percy, 
uh, Bill and Charlie and Ginny. Nine Weasleys. Just absolutely ridiculous. That is too many pe- too many family members. Well, that's the episode. Man, 20 minutes. That was a very long quiz master, but worth it every time. If you have any questions, comments, or theories that you would like to hear on the podcast, you should definitely send me an email. My email is thepotterdiscussion at gmail.com. That is thepotterdiscussion at gmail.com. If you could just scroll down, tap those five stars, and even leave me a written review, that would help me out so much, and it helps more people find the show. If you want my ultimate guide to a perfect Harry Potter marathon, where I give you my two favorite Easter eggs from every book and movie, and be joined into the final of monthly newsletters, and click that first link in the show notes, or click the card in this YouTube video, and enter your first name and email, and you are in for free. Well, that was a great episode. Stay tuned for next episode's uh, Versus series. I won't disclose who we are comparing, but it is a very suitable matchup. Oh, as always, use the to your advantage, and I will see you later.